Have you seen the option for new storyline post in Microsoft Teams and wondered what it is and how you should use it? I did, so I decided to dive in and take a look. And here's a few things that I found out along the way. There are two ways to find storyline in Teams. The first is to go to the chat option in the left-hand navigation rail, then click the new item dropdown in the toolbar at the top of the navigation pane. Select New Storyline Post. This takes you to the You Chat and opens the Storyline tab. From here, you can create a new post that is a discussion, a question, praise, or a poll. In this first example, I am going to create a poll based on the scenario that I'm the Microsoft 365 trainer for a large organization. I would like some feedback on what the next webinar should be about. I can use Storyline instead of just posting to a team that I belong to or emailing people that I work with on a regular basis. This allows me to potentially get feedback from a larger group of people. When creating the message, you can use the at mention to get this attention of specific people. In this case, I am going to add Adele because she is the manager of a group of people who regularly attend webinars, and I want them to know that they can vote on the next topic. Another way you can make it easier for people to find your storyline post is to use topics. This is kind of like using hashtags on social media. When you click the topics button in the toolbar at the bottom of the post, a section will appear where you can search to see if an existing topic matches the one you would like to use. When Storyline is first implemented in your organization, there most likely won't be that many. Let's look for training. It currently does not exist. Notice in the search results message, there is a button to create a new topic. When I click on that, a floating dialog box will appear where you can specify the name and give a brief description. I'm going to use something generic, but I do suggest that you use details specific to your organization because this will make it easier for people to find relevant posts. When you're done, click Create Topic in the bottom right corner of the floating dialog box, and the new tag will be added to your post. This is all the information needed for this message, so I will click Post. Now the poll is in my feed, but you might have noticed that I'm only seeing posts that I created. The next logical question then is, how can I see messages created by other people? To do that, we will go to the vertical navigation menu on the left side of the screen and add the Viva Engage app. At the bottom of the menu, click the three dots for View More Apps. Engage happens to be at the top of my list, but you may need to use the search bar to find it in your list. Then right-click over the app and select Pin to add it to the left-hand navigation menu. Then select Viva Engage. When you first open the app, you will be on the home page as indicated by the menu item on the left side of the screen. In the content pane, you can see where you can create a new message for either a discussion, question, praise, or poll, just like you saw in your personal storyline feed. But notice we are now seeing messages from other people. So we see that Lee has posted to his storyline, and so has Nestor. But when you're in the Engage app, you can also join communities. And so at the top of the post, we're seeing that Alex has actually posted in the Ask HR community. So this will give you an indication of where the message is coming from. On the menu item for home, we have a few items on a toolbar. The first is a drop-down arrow that lets you sort your messages by discover new content or see all conversations. You have an inbox and there will be a number next to it if somebody has sent a message or replied to a thread that you're a part of. And then you also have this activity bell that will send you notifications that are specifically for the Engage app. They are not the same activity notifications as you see in Teams. 
Now, if you want to get back to your personal storyline feed, you don't have to go back to chat if you don't want to. You can click on your name and then it will bring up the same information as we saw in our personal feed. And then on the right side of the screen, you have this box for joined communities. And at a minimum, most people are part of an all company community that is often set up when the admins implement this feature. If there are other communities available within your organization, you can click on Discover Communities, which would be the same thing as clicking Communities in the menu on the left-hand side of the screen. And here you should have the option to see the available communities by clicking View All Communities. The way that I've seen a lot of organizations use this is to either have company-wide topics such as Ask HR or communities of interest such as Power Platform, SharePoint, or Learning Copilot. Now, the benefit of this is that people who have different jobs but can use the same tools can come together and share their learning as well as resources. So let's look at an example of a community, and I'm going to choose Ask HR. When you select your community, you will see all of the conversations associated with that community and its topics. Now, this is a test environment, so there's not a lot here, but in your organizations, there might be a lot more information. And if you have a couple filters in order to narrow down and find that information. So first, we have this All Conversations drop-down. When you select that, you have additional choices such as only see new conversations, see all questions, questions with no marked answer, or questions with no replies. The drop-down towards the right-hand side of the screen allows you to sort by recent posts or recent activity. When working in communities, the two most common types of posts I see are discussion or question. Let's take a look at a question really quick. In this scenario, I'm a brand new employee who needs to submit a time off request, but I don't remember all of the details from onboarding. The initial question is limited to 150 characters and that's all you actually need to put but I do suggest adding the additional details below so that people can have more context to what you're looking for and you will get a better answer. Now, once you're done, go to the bottom right corner of the post box and click the word ask. To see the options on answering a question, I'm going to switch to Joni, one of my test users. In this example, Joni knows part of the answer to the question, so she can select the post and start typing in her answer. When she's done typing, she will click post and then other people can see this reply. Now we have a few options. I can come in and I can reply to specifically her answer and ask some follow-on questions. Anybody can give it a thumbs up or other emoji and anyone can upvote this answer. I quickly added an additional answer from Lee who had more complete details. Now I'm going to come back and look at these answers from the perspective of the community administrator who is going to evaluate these answers for accuracy. As the community admin, I can see an additional option which is this check mark button. When I click the drop down, you'll see two choices verified answer and best answer. Verified answer indicates that a community expert has validated the accuracy of these answers. Now, best answer is useful when you have more than one answer that is correct, but one of them might have additional information. So in this case, I'm going to mark Lee as the best answer. What that will do is it's going to bring Lee's answer up to the top of the list and it's going to put a tag on it. And then additionally, at the top of the post, there will be a best answer tag as well. 
And then the last thing that I would like to point out is this is also included for a little while in the top question section where you can see that what the question was and that it has two answers, one of which has been verified as a best answer. So there you go. That's a little bit about how you can use the storyline feature and the communities to generate discussions and ask questions of people across the organization, even if they're not in the same teams as you are, or you may not communicate with them on a day-to-day -day basis.